What's up all you Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me for an advanced look at all these collected editions coming out this week from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks of Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these trade paperbacks. These books are due out in the direct market on June 23rd, and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. And we have different collections here. We have an epic collection, a semi-complete collection. I mean, let's face it, that's what that is. Uh, one of the graphic novels, and then a couple of trades. Now, I always put timestamps in the description of the video if you just want to go look at a specific book, or if something you don't want to get spoiled about, like the Valkyries, if you don't want to know anything about that, or King in Black, you may want to skip that book. So all of the timestamps are in the description of the video. But let's go ahead and get started. We'll be talking about Miles Morales. Miles Morales, Ultimate End. Collecting issues 1 through 12 of the 2014 series. So it gets a little confusing when uh, per, when you want to read this. So this is a graphic novel format. It's a little bit smaller than your trade paperback formats. This is uh, the way it looks compared to a trade paperback. Just want to point that out. And of course, the price point is also cheaper. This is only $12.99. And you can probably tell how much more you get out of that. And also, the paper quality is different. That's something I never really talk about is the thicker, glossier paper in these graphic novel formats. So this does collect the Miles Morales uh, 2014 series when the series was revamped and it was just called Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man. This has been collected in omnibus format and trade paperback format and in this graphic novel format. This wraps up the saga of Miles Morales in the Ultimate Universe. And I know that gets a little bit confusing when I say things like that. So the Ultimate Universe, of course, all started with Ultimate Spider-Man number one. And then Miles Morales became Spider-Man through a series of unfortunate events. So what happens here is that there's this huge event that's coming to the Marvel Universe called Secret Wars. And Secret Wars kind of ends the Ultimate line. So some of these characters make it over to the 616 universe, to our regular Marvel Universe. And that's where this ends. This ends on the biff, big cliffhanger of what's that red stuff in the sky? And pretty much in order to find out what happens next, you have to read Secret Wars. And then the series kickstarts again here in the 616 universe. So Miles doesn't really end. It's just that the title Ultimate Spider-Man, because of all the Ultimate titles ending, comes to an end. The book has 272 pages, and all of this is written by Brian Michael Bendis. And the artist on this is David Marquez. I love his artwork. As much as I love Sarah Pacelli's artwork, David Marquez's artwork is freaking awesome. I don't know what it is. I, maybe it's the colors. Uh, he doesn't do these uh, flashbacks, but the colors, the covers, I don't know. He's just an amazing artist, and I want to see more of his stuff in the 616 universe. Cloak and Dagger show up, and as far as extras, let's look in the back. We just have a couple. We have a Brandon Peterson variant from the number one, Amy Reader's variant from number two, and then a variant from Sarah Pacelli. There are other variants that are collected on the opposite side of the standard edition covers such as the case here of this variant but yes david Ar marquez freaking awesome artist now let's keep going now three things made me very excited about this book when i got this batch in this is the very first book i read christopher priest check george's genty check and john walker u.s agent i had to read this u.s agent is one of my favorite characters yes he is a bit of an ass and yes, he he's usually comes across as this anti-hero type of character, depending on who's writing him. So I'm always curious to see what the next writer's going to do with the character. So during this time, U.S. Agent has been fired. But if you ask him, he quit his job as U.S. Agent. So he's no longer working for the government. Uh, he is reunited with a family member. There are some past events that come back to haunt him about his brother and what he thought about his brother being the hero that he was really well you can find out for yourself so this collects all five issues of the 2020 series it is $15.99 this is the way that the variants are collected on the opposite page of the standard edition cover some of them are thumbnails some of them are splash pages 
So, as I was saying, uh, John Walker's reunited with a family member. And we have a new U.S. agent. Oh, and he's also uh, reunited with um, Lamar. So, he is reunited with that character. And you can find out how all that plays out. And it is interesting. I love that. Love that. It's a take on that classic cover. But we, uh, it is interesting to see his reaction to a new U.S. agent. Like, why is there a need for a U.S. agent when he's doing freelance work? Uh, the book it has 112 pages. And it was nice to see Christopher Priest take on that he's not getting shot. I swear it's just a uh, tomato. Uh, it's interesting to see Christopher Priest take on John Walker. Now, of course, John Walker has kind of blown up. A lot of people know who he is because of the Falcon Winter Soldier series. But keep in mind, the comic book version of him, there he is, is a little bit different. He's not... Uh, actually... He's a lot more darker in the comics. Like I said, I mean, he's been a member of the West Coast Avengers. He's been a member of the Thunderbolts, Force Works. So his character has changed quite a bit over the years. And just showcasing some more of this artwork. Genti is the artist that did a lot of work on Weapon X. And he also did work on Buffy the Vampire. He actually, he kicked launched Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 8. So I've always been a big fan of his artwork. The guy has range for sure. And I wanted to showcase some of the action sequences. Here he is fighting the new U.S. agent. This guy named Saint. Uh, I'm a big fan of this guy's artwork. So if you have seen Falcon Winter Soldier, there are going to be some faces here familiar to you, such as uh, Battlestar and, of course, John Walker here. Um, now, that's all I will say about that, because it's only five issues, and I don't want to spoil much for anybody. Speaking of not spoiling much, again, I have timestamps down at the bottom. I hate to spoil this particular book here for anyone, but it is called Return of the Valkyries. So I have to talk about, well, I'm not going to say how, but I have to talk about what happened to the Valkyries and why this is such a big deal. So this does take place during the King in Black. So just in case, just a little bit of a spoiler before going into this. All right, so if you don't mind spoilers or if you've already read this kind of stuff and have been waiting for this collection uh there's only one valkyrie left in the marvel universe in the comics in the 616 universe and that is jane foster and something happened in war of the realms and all the valkyries are gone and the only valkyrie that is around is jane foster but if this book is called return of the valkyries that has to mean that the valkyries are coming back right well maybe and maybe not the way that you think they're going to come back so, this book collects four issues of the four-issue miniseries of The King in Black, Return of the Valkyries. It, you have to read just a little bit of The King in Black in order to understand what's going on with the Sentry. And you can find out for yourself why Jane is having this conversation with the Sentry. Now, that's pretty much all you really need to read. There is a character here that shows up that is very similar to the character of Valkyrie in the Thor movies. And she has shown up in the Marvel Universe before in the comics. Uh, she was a member of the Exiles. But my favorite thing that they do here is re uh, make Danielle Moonstar come back. I love that. She's one of my favorite characters from New Mutants. And I know she can't help but always be a member of the New Mutants, no matter how many times they try to graduate her. But she comes back and plays the role of the Valkyrie because that is very important. That was a, an important part of her story uh, when she went to Asgard for the first time. So it shows a lot of fights with the symbiotes here. Symbiotes. Whatever you want to call them. And here's some more artwork. The artwork is all supplied by Nina Vacueva. And the story is written by Jason Aaron and Torun Grombeck. Love that name. Torun Grombeck. That's such an awesome sound to it. All right. Look at that. That's awesome. Good to see Moonstar back in action. Mirage. I don't even know what she goes by these days. Now, let's look in the back here for some extras. All right, so you can find out if the Valkyries actually return, how many Valkyries are going to be at the end. But here are the extras. There's some wonderful variants here. I am going to skip a couple because it spoils something that happens inside of the book. But here's what it looks like. I love the fact the design of Jane Foster as Valkyrie is awesome. I love the fact that she has wings. She's my girl Moonstar. The book has 112 pages and retails for $15.99. And here's some Todd Nock variants. Visuals and the sketches. 
I love that they included this. This is nice. So this is from the special edition New Mutants, which is all part of the X-Men um, Asgardian Wars storyline. So this is going to be included in the New Mutants Omnibus Volume 2. It's got beautiful artwork by Arthur Adams, who, hey, I will be interviewing on the channel uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you want to join us for that. But I've always loved that. And this shows her first run-in with the Valkyries. And shows that she is, and actually, her first run-in with Brightwind. And shows that she does have some lineage to Valkyries. So she's a very complex character. Love that they included those pages in here. Here's other King in Black miniseries that are collected in trade paperbacks. And here towards the front and the main event. Now, let's keep going. It's that part of the video where I tell you to pause or hit that like button and subscribe. But here you go. Here are all the spines together of this week's books. Silk, Out of the Spider-Verse, Volume 2. Not labeled as a complete collection, but the book is thick enough and the price range always makes me think that these books are complete collections because these have been previously collected before in trade paperback format. So these are thicker collections featuring the character of Cindy Moon. Here she is, Silk. Um, if you want to go back and watch my volume one, I did an overview of that and I explained a little bit as to who she is, but she's back. And this is an interesting collection because this collects mainly just two issues from her ongoing series, from the 2015 series. But it also collects the Spider Amazing Spider-Man and Silk, the Spider-Fly effect. Which is a cute story, and I love to see Tom Grumet and Todd Nock drawing again. It's nice to see them both uh, drawing again. And it collects the big event of... I gotta be careful flipping through here because it is a time travel story. And who they meet, it's, it's adorable and heartwarming. Alright, but it also collects the Spider-Women event. So it has Spider-Women Alpha, Spider-Gwen 7 through 8... Silk 7 and 8, like I mentioned, this is the only thing that's collected in here. Spider Woman 6 and 7, and Spider Women Omega number 1. And we'll get, we'll talk a little bit about that, even though I already did kind of already through the pages of Spider Gwen Omnibus Overview. So this is Todd Nock drawing Spider Man. Love his artwork, big fan of his, and he's a fast artist. I'd love to see a young Justice Omnibus one day. So Silk and Spider-Man have a team up, even though they're kind of on opposite ends. They're, they're, they don't really see eye to eye because of the events that happened in the first volume and what happened to her life that was kind of taken away from her. So through a series of events, they're able to travel back in time. And they go back to a simpler time when Peter Parker was young and who they team up with to get help is freaking heartwarming. I love that there's some really nice moments in here. And again, this is, well, this is Todd Nock. I wanted to showcase some Tom Grumet artwork. Let me see if I can find some without spoilers. Okay, unfortunately, most of the parts that are drawn by Tom Grumet have the big spoiler in it. So here's some pages of Hydra agents by Tom Grumet. And then on the right-hand side, you have Todd Nock again. And just showcasing some more of this Todd Nock artwork. It is really difficult to showcase this art because of the spoilers. All right. Here we go. And a nice cover. Oh no, what's happened? Well, you can find out for yourself. Let's look at the Spider Women though. So here we have Spider Women Alpha number one. And even though it's a big crossover event with the alternate universe of Earth 65, where Spider Gwen comes from, it really is centered around Cindy Moon and her character and who the villain is of Earth 65. It's pretty interesting. So these women are forced to team up against this villain that's trying to take them out from Earth 65. And the crossover features some amazing artwork like Ben Gal and Joelle Jones. Love it. Like some amazing art that's in here. And Jessica Drew plays a bigger role, like she plays more of a mentor role to these two young ladies. So there will be one more collection of, um, I love that cover, of Silk, and it comes out later this year. Now with the release of Spider-Gwen Omnibus, though, I would love to see this collected in an Omnibus format. And yes, there will be some double dipping because of the Spider-Women event, but... The artwork is just awesome, and I really liked her character. Like, at first, I remember the first time I actually saw Silk was at a convention. Like, somebody was dressed as Silk, and I was like, oh, that's an interesting costume for Jessica Drew. 
And they were like, no, it's Cindy Moon. And I was like, who? And I hadn't read, because I've waited until collected editions. I hadn't been reading the Spider-Verse uh, storyline, or where she was first introduced in the um, Spider-Man by Dan Slott. So I, I had no idea who the character was. I thought she was just like the lady that was cosplaying as uh, Silk was just made up this character. All right, let's look in the back here for some extras. So here we have some toy variants by John Tyler Christopher who is known for doing toy variants. Uh, the book has 336 pages and retails for $34.99. Believe me, some of this stuff you never see in there. And here's some, what's that, Jeffrey Scott Campbell, I think. Yep, Robbie Rodriguez. And some other variants back here. All right. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. With this epic collection, Star Wars, The Old Republic Legends. This is volume four of The Old Republic. There we go. Normally when Marvel releases the books, they put the years here uh, when these books were originally published. So this was a pretty interesting read. I, I haven't read all of it yet, but I had not read any of this stuff. <laughs> and, um, and here comes where I fess up. I also haven't played the game, The Old Republic. So, uh, this tells you a little synopsis as to what's going on to kind of keep you up to speed. I like that. I like that they catch you up to speed in this classic Star Wars uh, text here. So, they tell you exactly what's happened. There's peace now in the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, both the Sith and the Republic don't trust each other. Um, so, I find that interesting that they both have spies, different spy stories. All right. So, what I was going to say is that I also haven't played the MMO of the Old Republic. I've, my brothers love KOTOR and they like the MMO. And they, they're, they've they also read some of the comics. So, that's what this is. Now, this takes place after that omnibus that's coming out. So, this is not collected in the omnibus for those of you wondering. Yes, this one here, which I'll be doing an overview here in the next week or so. I'm currently reading through this, but I had to take a break to read this. So this takes place after that. And just judging it from the three stories I read, and I'm working through my fourth one, this also takes place at different times during the game. So it looks like some of it was before the game, and still about thousands of years before Star Wars Episode One, And some of it during the game. I think the third story that I was reading here uh, takes place during the game. Now, do you need to have played the game? Absolutely not, because I have not played any of them or know any of the characters. I'm vaguely familiar with some of the characters that showed up here, but the, they, some of them did show up in the pages of the omnibus that I'm reading. Okay, so this collects Star Wars The Old Republic 1 through 6, the 2010 series, uh, The Lost Sons, Old Republic 1 through 5, Lost Tribe of the Sith, Spiral 1 through 5, and then material from Star Wars Tales 17 and Star Wars Visionaries. So there's a different series that are collected through here. And the first one is about this guy right here, Tenep Kel, who is a young Sith apprentice. However, he keeps seeing visions, and who he turns out to be later on plays a big important part in the Star Wars universe. So I thought that was pretty cool the way that they did this. The, the next story, this story arc right here, Thread of Peace, and one thing you probably notice is that this is the Old Republic number one, but they decided to start it with the Old Republic number four, because I think it makes sense in chronological order. It didn't bother me at all, because they're two different story arcs. And one thing you probably notice is that they give credits to the writers and artists here, all the people that worked on the book, because these were originally published digitally. There were web comics. So this, I love this artwork here. I think this is Alex Sanchez. So this really doesn't center around any of the characters like the other stories do. This is mainly how the galaxy is dealing with the peace treaty. So you see different sets of characters, different races in here. And of course, nobody trusting each other. And then we get the Lost Sons here. So this was a mini series. And I want to say this is the one that felt like it took place during the game because they were talking about events that I hadn't read about. And this is, introduces us to the character of Tehran, who was a spy for the Republic. And he's dealing with um, this old Jedi master who's kind of lost his mind. So it is really cool to go back and read about these stories that take place thousands of years before Episode 1 when the Jedi and the Sith were at the most powerful, it seems like. 
Or when at least there were so many of them that the whole galaxy knew about them. And just flipping through here to get to the next story arc. And then we have Star Wars Lost Tribe of the Sith Spiral. This miniseries here. And I think this one here is co-written by the one of the writers of the video game. And this one introduces us to Takara, this character right here. So they all have different type of artwork, and they all center around the game. That's what this collection mainly f uh, focuses on. And some of the characters from the Empire over there that I was uh, talking about, that omnibus, do show up here, but I don't want to spoil who shows up here in case you want to read this for the first time. So it is really cool that Marvel is releasing these as Legends. And, you know, some people don't consider this canon anymore because it's not part of the Disney thing. And, but I think, to me, uh, books like this, just like pre-Flashpoint, uh, you know, canon is whatever you want to make it. If you read it and it exists and in your head it's always canon, then that's the way it is. At least that's the way I think about it. There's also the Tales of the Jedi back here. Yeah, this artwork here. I haven't read this stuff, but that is some awesome cover there. That's uh, That's got to be Udon. Let's see. Yep. Udon Studios. Looks like Alvin Lee's artwork. Get this, this era of Star Wars is getting a lot of love. I don't know if this will ever be part of a collection, but we're getting Empire, and we're also going to get what's the, the, uh, the Sith storyline, The Rise of the Sith, Omnibus Editions. So for those wondering if they're going to reprint the Old Republic in uh, epic format, I'm not sure. That's one I haven't heard of. So this particular book retails for $39.99 and has 456 pages. As far as the extras, we have an index back here, Notes of the Old Republic, to introduce you to this era and some of the settings and some of the characters. And then we have some trade paperbacks and different variant covers back here. And this is Star Wars Lost Tribe of the Sith Spiral Text Feature by John Jackson Miller. So this is one of the, the main writer. And this is uh, Takara's writing, I think. And we have character designs and, of course, where else you can find the classic Star Wars. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count of each of these trades. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you're picking up. If you're a big fan of the epic collections of Star Wars, and if you've played the video games, this book kind of makes me want to go and play these games that everybody's been talking about for years. If this is the way you want to collect Silk, or if you want to wait for an omnibus, perhaps there might be one. I don't know. She hasn't shown up in the Spider-Verse movies. And what you think of the Valkyries. Should it keep going? Because I really miss that series. And it was good to see John Walker again again this was the uncanny omar thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet ring that bell for notifications we are on patreon and on Spreadshop. amazing ways to support the channel those links are in the description of the video and more importantly everyone stay healthy stay safe and much love <music>